Can you uh, explain what the jinn is? Because we can't see them, right? They're the creation of Allah. So do you have any other explanation for this? Yeah, yeah. The jinn. Yeah, so we just have to prove that Jesus is Jesus knows everything. What's the um, question so about the jinn? No, no, I, no, it wasn't about the jinn, but I just want to... So it's it's mankind, he created mankind and jinn to worship him, right? Yes. What is jinn? I don't know what So, well, um... So one it, creation of Allah which we can't see. Okay. That's what I can say. So like a spirit. So like another, a spirit. There's another okay. creation okay. that human beings are endowed with the faculty of intellect to distinguish between right and wrong, right? So the jinns is another form of creation in which they can also understand between truth and falsehood, right and wrong. And they were created before us, before human beings. So in our understanding of you know the cosmology and cosmogony and so on and so forth, where Human beings were created in a state after the jinns were already there. Okay. So, so okay. Um, but, so I'm just saying, if Allah, if your Quran says He created mankind to worship Him, how come not everyone in the world worships Him? If He's all knowing, why would He create everyone when He knew that down the line not everyone was going to worship Him? So you, will, you need to understand. You need to understand what it means when He created people to worship Him. It's not that he created people to force them to worship him. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. He created people okay. with a purpose for right. them is to worship the creator willingly, voluntarily. Gotcha. Okay. Those who do, they will have a reward, and those who don't, right. they will have to face the consequences. Okay. So we're in the same in that. I just wanted to understand. Okay. Gotcha. That's free will. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Free will. Any other question? I mean, no, so, I just, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so as we discuss about the Trinity, as we discuss about the why God, Jesus cannot be God. What's the conclusion you can make now? from the discussion well I, I understand what you're saying how you you wanted to separate and, and show how the Trinity can't be true because it's on the you know but to us it's one God in three forms again I, I'm interested in this gin because that seems to be almost like is that like the Holy Spirit almost like uh, angels Holy Spirit yeah, kind no, of. it's a different it's a different form of creation but when it comes to God one needs to have a coherent concept of God. So the Trinity or polytheistic understandings, they don't cohere in, in, in its concept. So when you say the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, but then you say they're not three gods but one God. That's where the contradiction is. So a coherent view would have to accommodate this logical problem of Trinity. I'm, I'm sure you know about the LPT. I mean, you should know very well. There doesn't seem to be a very good response or defense even by the philosophers even today they're trying to bring up different models one last model i've read about people talking about you know how the transitivity can be blocked by opacity or by opaque context i said okay look at all this creativeness um bringing in the idea of, of now god being divinely simple the divine simplicity and bringing these issues trying to solve this problem and introducing another problem at the same time <coughs> so if god was whatever in his nature, do you think God would communicate something that we'll not be able to understand? I, I, I do. That's kind of you know the, because, the question that I had, and that's where I said, what's where does the concept of faith come into the Muslim religion? Yeah. Because you you know, there are everything. certainly things that we can't understand. But the, the difference between faith by blindly accepting something which is incoherent, illogical, contradictory or faith in which you are agreeing and accepting something that you may not see but it is sensible, reasonable, intellectual and so on. There's a distinction there. Correct. So, so when I talk about the coherent aspect of things, <coughs> see, see, there are many things about our absolute God which we finite, limited individuals would not be able to grasp and comprehend. So God knows our weakness and limitation. Right. It will be unfair for God to convey something about him which we would not be able to understand because that will be a failure of communication. God will only communicate to us what we are able to understand and comprehend. If Trinity was true and God communicated it, we should be able to understand it. The, and, fact and, that, and you believe... the fact that no one can understand it and it's called a mystery right. is indicative of 
that it is not from God. It's not a true representation of God's right, right. concept. Do you believe that's a fundamental flaw in Christianity? Trinitarian where, Christianity. Where, where, yeah, yeah. The Unitarians where, are where, exempt where, from it. Where I believe that it's yeah, I just it's, uh, okay, so I'm where, where I believe that it's not a fundamental flaw. It's one of those things where I get it. It's God in physical form, God in spiritual form, but it's all one, right? You know, the, but as we discussed previously, right? When so, you say, when you say, you see, the problem of is, is this. I just don't. I, I just don't see that as a fundamental flaw that makes okay. me question the whole. Let belief. me tell you why I find it very, very incoherent. When we say someone is God, we know what God is. In our understanding, God is the most absolute, sovereign, self-sufficient, almighty, with no beginning, the creator of everything. So, he's going to go to prayer. Come yeah, back when to prayer. yeah, yeah. So, anyway, I'm going to prayer. Yeah, come back. Thank you. So, if you say the Father is God, you mean the Father is that self-sufficient, sovereign entity, eternal with no beginning, everlasting with no end, fullness of divinity, one absolute divine being. Not part of God, not one third God, but fully, complete, whole, one God. That's what you would mean by God. So the Father is one of those things. He cannot be deficient in any way what makes God God. So if you're fully complete, whole, divine God, how much of God are you? One God. So if Father is one God, the Son is another one God. Holy Spirit is another one God. That's three one gods. It's no longer part of them together make one unity. It's three gods working together in one government, one group, one institution, one whatever. Not one God, three gods in a unison. So it's not tritheism, it's triunitheism, right? But it's not monotheism. That's, that's what I see it because of the very implication of your belief. Sure. So let, let me ask you this. What, what does the Quran and this is a, what does the Quran say about jihad? I don't understand. The Quran says do jihad with the Quran. So no Muslim will say, ah, oh, it means is you take the Quran and you start hitting people with it. So the concept of jihad is linguistically it means struggle. It means struggle in the path of God technically. So you can struggle to resist your temptation from oppressing others, enjoying others through rape and murder and so on, looting their wealth. That's your jihad, struggle against yourself. You can struggle against yourself from all the whispers that you get from your own self, from others, from your community to be bad. So you try to rectify yourself to be good, to be virtuous, to be kind, compassionate, truthful, reliable and so on. The political jihad is when the state takes that struggle to open up a land to convey the message of Islam to the people in which there was an obstacle in front of them, where they cannot just go to the people where, because the boundary, the, 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 the state has a boundary, you need visas to go in, for example, I mean in current modern states. So a political jihad is when the state goes with its armies or another like what it did before and invites them become Muslims and save yourself from the hellfire. If you don't want to become Muslim yourself to those entities and allies he's talking to, then just step aside, let us go in so people can see Islam. If you then still become an obstacle, then fight our, face our army. Because you are becoming an obstacle to the true salvation for those people who are not, um, in a way, accessible to this truth. And this truth is being prevented by this obstacle that you are becoming. That's the political jihad. But in no way they can force the people to become Muslims. All they're doing is removing the obstacle to let Islam to be seen. And they can then say, I ah, accept it, or I don't want to accept it, I reject it. So you cannot force Islam to people, but the political entity was only a political force which was trying to remove that obstacle. And, and, and if they don't willingly step aside, Face the army, Islamic army. That's that, right, right. that used to be the status quo of all nation states in the past, where this is like an empire type things, where you know this is how people will go and conquer another land. Islam is conquering not for the land and the resources, it's conquering this land to open up the land to the people of the truth. So this is the only time in history where the people were conquered 
they joined the conqueror in the next mission. When Alexander the Great went to India or near India and elsewhere, and when, when, when they left, people were like, now I'm relieved, it's gone. So when he came and he you know, forced, not him, other conquerors and emperors when they came, forcibly made people to become slaves or become their religion, follow the religion and so on. When they left, people reverted back. Islam is the only exception in which when it went, people joined them and they joined to go, go and conquer other people to open up the lands. Not to force them to believe, but to invite them to believe. That's why the Islamic expansion is one of expansion of the heart and mind, not of expansion of simply just land and so on. Because what did Muslims do when they went, the Islamic army, when they went to the countries? They didn't take their land, they left their land with the people. You can cultivate, you can do and so on and so forth. But if you don't do it for after a certain number of years, for example, then you're wasting the resources. We can give it to someone else who can then utilize this particular land. There's a whole laws around this in Islamic law in which these kind of things are dispensed so that the, the resources are utilized properly rather than just left them for no reason. So if those people choose not to believe, do they become the enemy? No, they become the protected citizen. They call Zimmi, the protected citizen of the Islamic State, in which their life, their honor, their dignity, their religion will be protected. They don't have to go and fight to defend that land or conquer others. They are exempt from it by being a protected Zimmi and what they call by um, giving certain compensatory tax in response to their not participating in the expansion uh, activities by going into military conquest and so on and so forth. They can be exempt from that. But Muslims are not exempt, so they have to go. So why, why is there so much violence attributed to Muslims or, you know, over in the Middle East? I mean, you know what? And again, from, excellent question. From, from an American perspective, excellent question. It all seems to revolve around the religion. No, excellent and, question. I, I'm going to tell you why. If you go back, say, 300 years ago, in a place called Philistine, Palestine, Muslims were in power. People were living within this particular area, Jews and Christians as well. They didn't have a problem. They were living in peace. When Europe was massacring, were about to massacre the Jewish people, they were fleeing to the safe haven with the Muslim lands. Whether it be in Spain or Morocco, whatever, they were going there. Their life was protected by the Muslims. What happened in the Middle East when the turn of power changed with the Balfour Declaration by the British and others and so on? They created this political instability um, and the mismatch of power and so on and so forth. That created an unfair, unjust regime in there where Muslims have become the ones who are now victims. Their lands being taken away slowly and slowly and eventually the whole landscape changed that. Muslims are now the minority with a little bit of land, everything else now taken by the occupying forces. So of course, so yeah, yeah, of course. And of course there will be resentment. There will be anger. Because this is what happens. If someone comes to your home and you listen, well, you know what? This is all mine now. Your bathroom is mine, your lounge is mine, your kitchen is mine. You know what? You can go to that shed and live over there. You would not feel happy. You will resist. So what they're trying to do in stopping that resistance, and just injustice has happened already, but they want to even stop people from resisting. Initially, the Palestinians were resisting in the Tifada that you know of by peaceful resistance. That didn't work. In fact, they were even more curved because of their resistance and so on. Then they had a political um, resistance with, you know, some weapons and whatever they had, maybe initially with weapons and whatever they could get hand off. That's because that's their struggle for freedom and oppression. So in the Middle East, all this violence are happening because of this. And who created all of that? Not the Muslims. Muslims are the victims. There are other oppressors who are creating this one. And this has a ripple effect all over, all over the world where it seems like everyone is supporting Israel as a nation and not supporting the oppressed nation, the community who are Muslims, the Palestinians, the Palestinians, the Palestinians. 
Okay? So the Muslims are angry all, everywhere else as well. So when you say oppressor, you mean Israel? The occupying mean, force is the oppressor. Right? Israel or, or Judaism? Or no, no, no. It has nothing to do with Judaism. Right. People who were Jews were practicing their Judaism in their own quarters. Freely, openly, peacefully, intolerance. Judaism is not the problem with issue there. It's Zionism. Zionism is a religion on its own. It doesn't have to be an atheist to be a Zionist. There is there are Muslim Zionists too, I hear. So so <laughs> America and their relationship with Israel that creates the you know, the, I, I, I don't know if I want to use the term hatred, but you know, you've heard people call America the great oppressor. People can have resentment and anger with America because it's siding with an oppressor. It's not only supporting the oppressor, it's facilitating the oppressor, it's safeguarding the oppressor, it's promoting the oppressor. So be, by doing so, when you glorify a terrorist, there's a law now that you are actually committing a crime because you are supporting, encouraging, promoting terrorism. America, with its support, is glorifying terrorism. So it's a criminal in the eyes of many people. Right. So does the Muslim uh, religion support the terrorist acts? Of course not. Bomb, I, I don't know. No, I'm sorry. Of course not. Of course not. Because no. Islam gives people the freedom to choose what religion they want to follow, right? If you want to accept Islam, fine. If you don't want to accept Islam, that's your choice. If, but, but a lot of these but, acts are but, done in but, the name of but Allah. People, when they take in their own hands to commit the acts of violence against innocent people, of course this is wrong. Islam doesn't condone any of that. If a country fights another country, you don't con consider that terrorism. Because one country is fighting another country, whatever the reason. But if you fight an innocent individual or innocent state, that is terrorism. So whoever does that, whether it be Christians and Jews and the Muslims and atheists, you're committing an acts of terror and terrorism, which is totally not, accept not acceptable. So, you know, so in America, these acts of terrorism that, you know, we hear are being done in, you know, in the name of Allah, right? Can I, can I just yeah, yeah. switch back? Yeah. The acts of terrorism that America is committing sure. for years and years, everywhere in the world. What are you as American doing for that? You seem to be focusing on the response to this terrorist acts. No, 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 I understand. To understand, to understand why in this landscape you have these pockets of terrorism happening, you call the terrorism. This is a response to American aggression. So what are you as Americans, I suppose you're Americans, right? What are you doing to stop America from these aggressions? That will solve the problem of any of these pockets coming and committing here and there, blowing the Twin Towers and blowing this and that. That will stop there. Because before America did all those things, did people go to America or the Americans themselves start blowing up buses, trains and big buildings? It was never heard of. It's only when America has become the aggressor Certain people, which we don't agree with, right. are committing a tit for tat response. Right. So the solution is remove the aggression. So any resistance or counter response that comes will be eliminated, will be prevented. Right. So, so if all of that stopped, though, you don't believe that it's settled. Because you want your land back, right? In Palestine, Palestine yeah. if the land has been taken away, if I, if I take your land, if your home, no, I'm, I'm, I'm asking, I'm, 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 asking I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm trying to yeah. understand something. It's not my view. We're talking about a view of people who are sound in their rational judgment. If somebody has taken your land wrongly, sure. what it is required is simply give their land back and say sorry, and that's settled. But if you saying, I'm not going to give you land back, then the problem will remain. That is the reality check that people need to have. Unfortunately, people are not thinking that way. They're thinking, how do we stop all this terrorist activity? Let's have prevent strategy in UK. Let's
it's not going to solve the problem because there will be certain individual who will take on their own hands out of their desperation through their maybe emotional stance, not thinking rationally, and they commit something bad in response. I agree with, but to prevent these kind of things are happening, you have to look at their grievances and you have to solve that problem. America, England are not doing that. In is, is trying to, you know, there's a tap that's leaking. Let's put some sedative over it. It's never going to fix the problem. Put a pot underneath the dropping deep, dripping water. It's not going to solve it. Concentrate on the root cause. Eliminate the root cause. What, what is the root cause? In your, in your no, no, not mind. mine. You tell me. What is the root cause in Palestine? I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to ask you as an American. What is the root cause of problem in Palestine? Occupied land. Occupied land. I, I'm not going to say anything. You tell me. So occupied land of what? Who's the occupier and whose land is being occupied? Well, in, in, so I, I don't know all the history of, you know, but I think from your You should know. I know. I that. think this is a fair question though, but, but what for, you think of that. But from my view, not important. We are talking yeah. about... So then why is a, our view important? Why? Because you're America, yeah. because you're Americans, are not solving the problem. So you need to go and understand what the root cause is. So when you realize occupation, people's usurping and stealing people's land and so on and so forth, seems to be the problem that has caused tension around the world, give the land back to its owners, the real owners. So if it the Jewish people, give it to the Jewish people. The Christian people. If you belong to the atheist people, give it to the atheist people. Give it to the owners who are the rightful owners of the land. Right. It so happened that it was the Palestinians who had the majority of the land. Okay, they didn't just simply sell it off, it was taken from them. So when everybody was living in Palestine, cohabiting together, mm -hmm. that, I think you answered my question. Who owned the land? Everybody owned their. Go back before. 19 say 20s go back in the 1880s for example an arbitrary date look at the landscape look at the map who were the indigenous or who were the people living there okay not someone who's a tourist there people who had their own lands and you will see the answer i'm surprised not you i'm surprised by the media brainwashing of americans and europeans that they didn't even know who's the occupying force and who is the aggressor and the, and the victims. And that's why they never is pressurize the government to make the right judgment. The government, with their own particular interest, they will do what they want to do because they have an interest. But if wrong, they would have solved the matter a long time ago. So the people need to be aware, need to be educated. Unfortunately, the governments are not allowing people to educate it. There is a whole program of media brainwashing. Brainwashing to know who is the victim and who is the criminal. That's the problem. So we, so we want to see that people... You know, like, um, how many Americans, they don't consider the 9-11 is Muslim terrorists done it. They think it's a job by the government themselves, right? Many. The government calls them conspiracy theorists. Sure, sure, sure. Why are they thinking that way? Why are they conspiracy theorists? Is it because they love the Muslims? Of course not. Because the circumstances tells us something fishy going on. So these people are waking up. So we want the general public to wake up to solve these problems of the world. And you will see that America will be a great nation sure. in the eyes of people. So um, so I, I understand, I understand you and I agree that is, there is brainwashing. Let's say, I think, if I'm not, not mistaken, I, you might know, I, I, isn't Israel, like the Jewish people that are occupying Israel, isn't their argument that this was our land farther back, before? Even before that, it was the original Palestinians, and the descendants of them, the Arab Muslims. They don't win even there. Okay, so, yeah? so what is their, like, no, no, they, they have many arguments. They think all of Saudi Arabia is there, the Iraq and Saudi Arabia. That's the Zionist, the world view in their landscape. They want, they want it all. Who gave it to them? God has already guaranteed that this is your land. Of course, it's not your land. If that was your land, what happened to it? So lands come and go. But what the Muslims in Palestine are saying, 
you, with all your sanity, sanity today, you know, like a primitive individuals in the past where it's all about, like, you know, uh, hunting tribes where you can hunt and hunt everything, not only animals and the people and kill them all, loot everything and it becomes your you human beings you understand and appreciate the differences whether they are you know white or black or whatever you want to live human beings right. so people are a bit more grounded on humanity compared to some other times so they're saying you found our land taking it by force okay we're not talking about million years ago a million years ago it wasn't even yours to begin with like America was not for Americans it was indigenous people Give it back to them then. I agree. <laughs> right? Stole it so from. so yeah. the question is not about this question is the oppression that is committed in the last few hundred years. That's where the problem is. The but also on you can try all that mess unless you haven't addressed the grievance of the people. There is always going to be pockets of problems here and there. You will never you cannot stop people when injustice is being against any human being. Sooner or later, they will rise up. Some strongs from them, emotional from them will rise up. And they might do something which is not good. That's why we need to really make people not have these grievances. So, you know, why do I have the right to mock you and your mother and your wife and your father and so on and so forth? Why do I have the right to insult you? I don't. But this is what the society is doing now. It says, you know what? You can mock your father, your mother, your prophet, your God, and so on and so forth. If you mock my parents, I will be angry. I would not be happy. I would say, what, 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 what are you doing? What's wrong with you? If you mock my God, who I love more than my parents, I would be even more angrier. So this is what's happening in the society. People doing this. Why are they doing this? In the name of freedom. That's not how you bring people together. That's the division that you make. That's the division you're trying to make. Yeah. If you want to, you know, look, Quran says, do not insult even other gods, lest they insult Allah back. So even there are other, we are told not to insult them. You can disagree and say, they're not worthy of worship, but we have no right to mock and insult. Like, so wouldn't that be like, if you you disagree with them, say you disagree with them. You say out loud that God isn't real. Our God is real. Couldn't that couldn't that kind of be like an insult? Couldn't that be seen as what is an insult? It's, it's to the person. The person can define it for themselves what an insult. There's no uh, no no no. You can't just define whether you're so man or insult. look look. The, the the current trend is you can define whether you're a man or a woman. I mean, can I define a dragon trapped in a human body? No. Why not? Because that's not how you are. No, no. I am a dragon trapped. Can you hear the word? Trapped in a human body. I am a female trapped in a body. Okay. No. That's the trend, right? You know the trend. That's what people are trying to. All this LGBTQ business and so on. You and I may disagree. That this yeah. doesn't work with us. It doesn't work and, with us. And to them, us disagreeing is an insult to them. Now, the, how, can that be, now how can that be an insult? We are simply disagree disagreement. We, we that's well, what I'm saying. That's what then, I'm saying. they need to understand what insult is then. Well, and I think what he's saying that's what I'm saying. is... They see it as insult. We do no, not. No, it's not about do. seeing. It's, you it's need to understand. Disagreement is not an insult. Right. I can disagree with you on something. You can disagree with me on something. I'm insulting you or you're insulting me. Sure. I but I, I, I do think, to his point, that yeah, I can tell you as, you know, an Amer even walking through London, right, that, um, you know, with, with so many people in the Middle East that, you know, it's like there's so much animosity because you're either white or American or whatever, right? And I think it's because, you know, something as simple as believing differently, right? The, say the Middle Eastern people, if they do have this outlook about the American white, that's a social conditioning created by the Americans themselves. So they're the ones to be blamed partly too, because they have created a social conditioning of a large number of word for truth, and they have created this grievance within them. If they didn't have that condition, that would be removed. It's if this is the condition that's been so an insult is something that is derogatory. 
something that offends you in such a way that we make some ridicule, some mocking, something of that nature. Because if I said, for example, you are beautiful. But if I said you're ugly like a... I'm making derogatory statements. That I'm making an insult. So then on that case, what if, I'm, what if I just say you're crazy? Like, I don't, like, what if, like, someone out of their mind, like, someone on the street who just obviously is not right in the head, they say, they come up to me and say, you're ugly. And I'm just like, walk away. I'm unbothered, uninsulted. Even though they said an insult, I'm uninsulted. Why is, like, tell, tell your wife you're ugly. No, yeah, but again, like it's... <laughs> Would you? Would you? Right. He understands. Like, uh, you know. So, which people will get hurt? I There's no reason for you to be hurt because I don't have to accept what you believe in. You don't have to accept what I believe in. But it doesn't mean I'm insulting you or you're insulting me. You have to make that distinction. But to disagree is not is kind of in a way to say I'm right and you're wrong because we I believe something else than you believe. I'm right, you're wrong. That's not an insult either. You can say I'm wrong and I would not say it's an insult. Okay. So Because that has nothing to do with an insult. It's it, it, Sure, I mean you can say that, but people it's it's a it's just the such people a people who get offended saying this is an insult, they need a reality check. I'm, I'm, exactly. I'm not I'm not saying that it's just but it's saying insult is just such a broad word like people can take anything as an insult. It's just hard to specifically define. They need to understand what an insult is then, right? People need to when we say for example something is good, you need to understand what good is. Because the good doesn't mean something that is smelling, mm -hmm. foul. It has its own connotation conceptually. Right. The language that we're speaking, the words have meanings. Mm -hmm. Insult, what kind of meaning does it have? Good meaning in the dictionaries? No. That, oh, it's okay for me to be insulted? Everyone says, no, I don't want to be insulted. Mm -hmm. And they might, by today's convention, give legal right to people like, it's okay for you to insult others. But we're saying we shouldn't even have that right, okay? Because that is not a good thing. Insult and mock and ridicule. So you think things are, by that case, words are either good or bad? It's, it's no, no, they're neutral words. There's neutral words? Of course. Okay. So, I mean, I, was, I just want to make that understand, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But insult, by its own conceptual understanding, mm -hmm. is not neutral. Okay. But yeah, saying, like, like, um, can I insult you? Do you think like, yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you, you think, what is this? What's wrong with this guy? He wants to insult me. Because you'd think insulting me is to defame me. Mm -hmm. to some, Certain words are like that. Oh, um, can I say, for example, can I, um, I don't know what the easiest word, but something like totally negative. Like, can I say like you are a rapist? Why would I say that? Is that a good thing to be associated with? Oh, I, oh yeah, I am a rapist. Hallelujah. No one would be proud of that. No one would glorify that. No one would be happy and, 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 and say, now let's celebrate it. Because a rapist by this connotation is someone who acts on their will and force their will on someone else by force without their consent and so on. That's not a good thing. So in be taken in that way like why would you do that so when it comes to religion we can have hard differences you know the example I gave you about the coherency of the concept of God we say God guidance to all nation all times because he's just and all the nations when the wars came to them, they had a clear understanding of who God is and what they have to do to be saved from the hellfire that is there in the future. None of them, prophets, told them about, you know what, God is like a trinity and then Father, Son and Holy Spirit and God is like a half elephant and half man and God is a black man called Krishna. And so, all of this then it came from God because God will be always consistent in his message. Because consistency, because he's one, he hasn't changed. So when he conveyed the message about himself to Abraham, 
Abraham in the day of judgment sees God. God on the throne, someone on the right hand side, and there's a Holy Spirit hovering. He will faint. I would faint if I was Abraham. Because he was the friend of God, and the friend of God, the friend, God didn't tell him who he was, that I had a son as well. So this is what we are saying is, people often don't realize from historical transformation what happens to the soul of the truth gets corrupted, it gets changed over time. When Moses came upon him be peace, he didn't tell the people to worship him. He told people to worship God. When Christ came, the son of Mary, upon him be peace, he didn't tell people to worship him, he says worship God. But what happened? As time went, now I hear Christians saying, worship God through Christ, worship Jesus, and so on and so forth. Worship God, he himself has become the object of worship. What a change of turnover of, uh, it's like, you know, a tragedy. Who said to worship God only? Him instead. So that's why we're saying is Christianity in the Quran, they says they are dhalim. They are into their misguidance. So to remove the misguidance to come to the truth, is to understand God as God has consistently throughout history and explained about who He is. Not three in one. There's a difference between one, three in one, two in one, five in twenty, whatever. They're not. So Christians need to come back to the God of Jesus, the God of Moses, the God of Abraham. Then we will say, yes, you are now coming on the right track, and the next step is follow the final messenger if you are a Jew if you are a Jew and the messenger prophet Jesus came your next step as a Jew is to accept him as your prophet as your messenger and follow him so that you worship him according to what he has brought through laws God given to him if you're a Christian your next step is to know who the final messenger is Prophet Muhammad you don't lose anything you are now worshipping God as God, who God is in his reality. So this is what we're saying. Islam is that only acceptable ideology, the message, the religion, the way of life that is acceptable to God. The religion of Jesus, Abraham, Moses, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. We're inviting you. You're not losing anything to become a Muslim. You're gaining everything. And if we don't accept that, so then we're a Christian. And if we're you American, don't accept that, your enemy? <laughs> you don't become my enemy because you don't accept something. If you don't accept Islam, I, I agree you, with you, you, kind of you will have your consequences with God in the hereafter. If you are living in an Islamic country, then you will be the non Muslim citizen in an Islamic country. Back in the past, where Islam was implemented, then you will have been the protected citizen in which your life, your honor, your dignity, your wealth, your religion will be protected. protected. Yeah. But today we don't have an Islamic country where Islam is implemented. And that's why somewhere, some places, the Christian minority may be oppressed. And I don't disagree with you that that might be the case in some places because they are not implementing Islam. That's why people may get oppressed. Muslims are getting oppressed in the Muslim countries themselves, let alone the other minorities who are not Muslims. So, so what are the what are the sex, sect sect you know, Muslim where uh, you know people are killed, right? You, you know for their beliefs. I mean, right? The, the, I, you have no right to kill someone for their belief just but, because they have a different but, belief, what right? Are those, they claim to be Muslim, they claim to follow Allah. Yeah, well, the KKK claim to be Christians. Right. And the Lord resisted Allah's claim to follow Allah. Hmm? Right. It, 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 no, where is it? Question. I don't Someone have the bag. Uh, they are. Where did you leave it? Someone took it from me. 
I hope so. I hope so. Our scholars have been vocal against it in the early 90s against people like that. But you know the summer of the West suddenly kind of died. Is it the same bag? Yeah? Same, same bag like this one, yeah. Where is it? Okay. Maybe it is with Hassan. You know the Jamaican There you go. Here. Oh, nice. Thank you. That's okay. Because your batteries run out, so you're gonna pack your stuff. My batteries run out? Yeah. Battery for what? Battery for the Microphone. receiver. The receiver. Oh, the receiver, okay. And even this, maybe, I don't know. Because it wasn't, it wasn't recording the audio. Okay, okay, not sure. Who are the American Christians. Yeah. Still there for the messengers, and he came with the, the original message of worship. Allah, the one God, you know, with, uh, with, uh, and you love Him, and you have a personal, deep, loving connection with that God. You don't go through Muhammad or through Jesus or through Mary or through the old peace. You go directly through God. Even Jesus said that in the Bible, in the Gospel of John. I agree. You know, a hero is You were right. talking about enemy. We have an enemy. It's the devil. It's the common enemy. It's Shaitan. God tells us, beware of this enemy. Satan, 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 Satan. He is our common enemy. So you have to take him as an enemy, avoid all the footsteps of Satan, get rid of him by, by, by this jihad of your struggle of yourself, not to follow the whispers and footsteps of Satan. That is the clearest enemy. The enemy of the state may be the one, uh, another state, if they come to totally destroy any little from existence, then you will consider them your enemy. But you will have relationship with other nation states in which you will be certain pacts and treaties in which you will say like like say well, you know you have an international agreement you don't violate this agreement you have to fulfill these agreements that's the pact and the treaties that you have islam is very harsh on people fulfilling the obligation of treaties and and contracts, contracts and so on yeah one, one of the one of the biggest misconceptions is you know when we see a terrorist act and it's done in the name of Allah, right? We attribute it to Islam. Yeah. Right? That's where in, 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 you know, when the American military does something, they don't do it in the name of religion. You know, they, right? You know, and so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, you know why they have equated this act with Islam rather than with this misguided Muslims? Because they have a beef with Islam. Because Islam and American interests, they're not synonymous or equivalent. America is a materialistic organization as a state. It thrives on industries like pornography, alcohol, gambling, interest, and Islamic gain, all of that. All of that. So, so of course, America would not want any obstacles coming from the Muslim world, which is so big, can be so powerful if they unite. That's why he's always trying to demonize the other and saying, okay, this is all about Islam. So in the minds of the Americans, they will think, that's the thing. So it's, it's a concocted um, enemy within the minds of the American for a political interest. It's, it's, it's everything's done in the name of religion and not in the name of exactly. you know, That's why a country or a state That's or you know, some military. Do you know why some Muslims also get really angry, some Muslims? America send bombs to Iraq in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, whatever. They write it on the bombs and they drop it. Yeah. How would the Muslim world feel when they see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they're, the they're aggravating people's grievance and anger. <laughs> I mean, you are a non-religious entity, you're America, but don't say in the name of God we're going to bomb you. I mean, that, that's going to even make things worse, right? And think about it, the invaders are coming to invade your country, and you have not, nothing wrong, you're living in a village, cooking your meat and whatnot, and you're with your family, and you're having a family unit, and now you're seeing a country bombing your country. Oh, wow. yeah. One thing I can tell you, America can be a great nation with all these people around there, if they start sorting their governments out, right? Well, every, <laughs> I mean, I agree. Everything is done, uh, you know, in the name of power, right? Everyone power, right? Right. Uh, it's a power it's in a, the wrong hands is what causes the power right. struggle. I agree. Yeah. So likewise, Europe or Australia or Africa, they can be a great nation as long as because people themselves.
they're okay, they're good. But they're manipulated, they're indoctrinated, they are somehow, you know, totally brainwashed. That's the key word, media brainwashing, political brainwashing. And that's why the poor people, they're at a loss, not sure what to do. I mean, like, the, the, the presidents that came to you, <laughs> some of them, they haven't got a clue how to run the country, and people are voting for them. Because that's how the confusion people are in. They don't even know who's the fit candidate and who's not. Yeah. So America has a lot of working to do by the people where your systems of education, culture, evil and real left, yeah, as well as other countries too, not just America, only other countries where young people can have this tolerance and, and understanding of each other and we can live in a society with our differences. We can live knowing that, you know, you eat pork and I don't. But I'm not gonna simply like you know like say I you know what? I can't even speak to you because you eat pork. I know this is your diet. I know this your religion says that. But it doesn't mean that you know I can't even say hello to you just because of that. So this division that's been created to make enmity between people, between nations, between races, between linguistic communities is for this again and someone's because when you have divisions and then you make them in pockets here and there, unity strength, division is weakness. Anyway, it's been nice and pleasure speaking to you. All the best. You take care. Take care.